You're inside a small spaceship. You're flying higher and higher, then leave the atmosphere of our planet. Hundreds of thousands of satellites with glowing advertising banners appear in front of you. One of them says, Happy New Year, 5699. This year you have an anniversary. You will be 5,000 years old. You press a button on the touch panel and activate the ad block. Now you can't see any holographic banners through the glass. You're going to make a jump through space. A black tunnel called a wormhole appears in front of the ship. You fly inside and the hole disappears. The ship has teleported to the Andromeda galaxy. You discovered an exoplanet here recently, similar to Earth. It's also blue, has a lot of water, but only one huge continent. The planet is hidden in dense interstellar clouds, and you hope that other people won't find it soon. But as soon as it's entered into the intergalactic register, you'll definitely buy this planet. You call it Second Home. Now you're flying into the atmosphere, going through the clouds, and landing on a small green hill. At the foot of it, you see several small houses made of clay and stone and thatched roofs. Near the houses, locals are working in simple clothes. They're plowing the ground, and cows are eating the grass nearby. You have turned on your stealth mode, so the locals can't see you. They aren't real people. You created them using cloning technology. The conditions on this planet are now the same as they were on real Earth in the year 699, the year when everything changed for you. You remember swimming in the lake at night and looking at the stars. One star moved from its place and began to approach. A huge flash of light and something heavy fell into the water. You lost consciousness and woke up in the morning on the shore. Only a thousand years later, you realized it was a meteorite. The day after the star fell, you noticed that any damage on your body instantly disappeared. After a couple of decades, you realize that you get older slower than the rest of the people in your village. After another 50 years, you understood that you didn't age at all. Knights, Vikings, the Dark Middle Ages, the geniuses of the Renaissance, you see it all with your own eyes. You become an emperor of a huge empire, and then you get bored and decide to live in the slums to feel all the shades of this life. You think that some magic gave you immortality, but then you realize that any magic or sorcery is really science. You communicate with the greatest minds on the planet, make friends with incredibly bright people and really bad ones to understand the nature of humans. Around the 15th century, you've got all the knowledge and read all the books that people could give you by this time. You begin to explore the world yourself. You discover the process of photosynthesis in plants, grasp the fundamental laws of physics, conduct amazing chemical experiments, and find out that you live on a tiny planet in an infinitely vast universe. Biology, chemistry, physics, astronomy, you learn and explore everything. The results of your scientific research in these subjects are ahead of humanity by a hundred years. While the whole world is riding horses, you're already building a car with a steam engine. To hide your identity from people, you constantly change your name and place of residence. Over a thousand years, you have learned all the languages of the world, and even those that no longer exist. You study all the psychologically known personality types. Your social and emotional intelligence is so developed that you can create a person's portrait after one minute of talking to them. You look into their eyes and understand what they want, are afraid of, or are ashamed of. You spend several years in continuous meditation to calm your mind and gain wisdom. You lead the life of a hermit and watch humanity slowly develop. But then the 20th century comes and the life of the entire planet changes dramatically. The Industrial Revolution, the first cars and trains, cinema, radio, and television. In these 100 years, people are changing more than they have in the previous 1,500 years. Now it's hard for you to keep up with the world. New inventions appear every day and every hour. The knowledge and experience of previous years help you become one of the most influential people on the planet. World leaders listen to your opinion. Thanks to your developed communication skills, you can negotiate with any person. You go through expensive and high-quality plastic surgery operations so that no one will recognize you. You keep moving and getting a new ID every 20 years. 
you have a lot of money, as well as gold and other valuable metals that you've collected for centuries. You build houses and shelters in the most beautiful places on the planet. You finance the development of new technologies. Sometime in the 1950s, you predict that in the next century, there will be a unique network that will allow you to store all the knowledge of the world in a small device. With the help of this network, all people will be able to communicate with each other from different points of the Earth. You're surprised that the Internet appears much earlier. Developers create virtual reality worlds with photorealistic graphics. Artificial intelligence is smart enough to rule a small country. Genetic engineering allows us to clone people and mix our bodies with robots. The first cyborgs appear. With each passing century, there's less and less space on the planet. You get tired of people and consuming new technologies, and you spend more and more time in your home on the top of Mount Everest. Humanity is taking over Mars and the Moon. Soon, these places aren't enough for people too. In the fourth millennium, scientists create a quantum engine to travel through space. You're among the first people to try this technology and make the jump to another group of planets orbiting a star similar to our solar system. Your ship breaks down and you can't go back. You're left to live alone on a new planet. Your body adapts to the conditions on it so you don't need oxygen reserves. Then you learn to breathe without oxygen at all. The cells of your body receive what they need for normal functioning from the surrounding gases. Your skin is getting rougher because of the dusty atmosphere of the planet. And with the increased gravity, you develop incredible strength. You'd become a super person with such a body on Earth. You manage to send a signal into space, and you hope that humanity will catch it. You've been living alone for over 500 years without books, the internet, or any communication. You spend most of the time exploring a lifeless desert world. Using parts and tools of the ship, you create a vegetable garden. You also have a lot of water reserves. During all this time, you realize that you miss the old world and your life before the meteorite fell. Some spaceship picks up your signal and comes for you. You return to your home world. Travel between solar systems is now as easily available as travel by subway or bus. You decide to find a planet as similar to Earth as possible to recreate human life there. Using the power of modern telescopes and your knowledge of astronomy, you discover what you've been looking for in the Andromeda Galaxy Nebula. You arrive at the second home and live a human life there. For hundreds of years, you observe people and mentally go back to your past. You protect those people from external threats, like asteroids, but don't interfere in their lives. From time to time, you fly to Earth and other planets for business. Life on the second home is becoming very similar to life on Earth. There are more and more people and cultures. Technologies are emerging. You have completed your goal, and now you want to discover other worlds. You spend the next 5,000 years studying the ever-expanding universe.